How to Win at Everything You Do is the ultimate guide to mastering both personal and professional success through strategic thinking. This comprehensive book teaches you how to think strategically, make informed decisions, and execute plans effectively. Whether you're an entrepreneur, a professional, or someone striving for personal excellence, this guide offers valuable insights and practical strategies to help you achieve your goals and rise above the competition. Breaking down complex concepts into easy-to-follow strategies, this book empowers you to turn your vision into victory by focusing on creating a clear vision, setting achievable goals and clear objectives, developing effective strategic plans, and executing with precision to bridge the gap between where you are and where you want to be. Emphasizing execution and continuous improvement, this book equips you to achieve remarkable success and make your dreams a reality. Chapter 1. Introduction to Winning The room falls silent as you step onto the stage. All eyes are on you, anticipation building. You take a deep breath, knowing that this moment could change everything. As you begin to speak, your voice resonates with confidence and purpose. This is what winning feels like the culmination of strategic thinking, relentless preparation, and unwavering determination. Winning isn't just about crossing a finish line or holding a trophy aloft. It's a mindset, a way of approaching life that propels you towards your goals and aspirations. Whether in your personal life or professional career, the principles of winning remain constant. It's about setting your sights on a target and relentlessly pursuing it, adapting and evolving along the way. But what does it truly mean to win? In personal contexts, winning might manifest as achieving a sense of fulfillment and happiness. It's about setting and reaching personal goals that align with your values and aspirations. This could mean mastering a new skill, nurturing meaningful relationships, or cultivating a sense of inner peace and contentment. In the professional realm, winning often translates to career advancement, recognition, and tangible rewards. It's about climbing the corporate ladder, launching a successful business, or becoming a respected expert in your field. Professional achievement indicators might include promotions, industry awards, or financial milestones. At the core of winning lies the winner's mindset. This isn't about a fixed set of traits you're born with, but rather a growth mindset that you can cultivate and strengthen over time. Those with a growth mindset believe that their abilities and intelligence can be developed through dedication and hard work. They see challenges as opportunities to learn and grow rather than insurmountable obstacles. The characteristics of a growth mindset include resilience in the face of setbacks, a thirst for learning, and the ability to embrace challenges. People with this mindset tend to persist in the face of obstacles, seeing effort as the path to mastery. They learn from criticism, find lessons and inspiration in the success of others, and ultimately reach higher levels of achievement. Cultivating a growth mindset offers numerous benefits. It fosters a love of learning and a resilience that is essential for great accomplishment. People with a growth mindset tend to achieve more than those with a fixed mindset. They worry less about looking smart and put more energy into learning. They also recover more quickly from setbacks, viewing them as opportunities for growth rather than indicators of failure. Positive thinking and motivation go hand in hand with a growth mindset. While it's important to be realistic, maintaining an optimistic outlook can significantly impact your ability to succeed. Techniques for maintaining positivity include practicing gratitude, reframing negative situations, and surrounding yourself with supportive, like-minded individuals. Motivational practices play a crucial role in sustaining your drive towards success. This might involve setting clear, achievable goals, celebrating small victories along the way, and regularly reminding yourself of your overarching purpose. Visualization techniques, where you mentally rehearse achieving your goals, can also be powerful tools for maintaining motivation. While a winning mindset is crucial, it's not enough on its own. To truly excel, you need to pair this mindset with strategic thinking. Strategy is what separates the consistently successful from those who experience only occasional wins. 
It's the difference between reacting to circumstances and proactively shaping your path to success. Strategic thinking involves looking at the big picture, anticipating potential challenges and opportunities, and planning accordingly. It's about making decisions today that will position you favorably for tomorrow. This is in contrast to tactical thinking, which focuses on immediate actions and short-term goals. The long-term impact of strategic planning cannot be overstated. By thinking strategically, you're not just solving today's problems. You're positioning yourself to capitalize on future opportunities and navigate potential challenges. This approach leads to more sustainable success and helps you avoid the pitfalls that often come with short-term thinking. Throughout history, we've seen countless examples of strategic successes in business and beyond. These success stories often share common threads, a clear vision, careful planning, adaptability in the face of changing circumstances, and persistent execution. The lessons we can learn from successful individuals often revolve around the importance of persistence, the willingness to take calculated risks, and the ability to learn from both successes and failures. They remind us that success is rarely a straight line, but rather a journey filled with ups and downs, each offering valuable lessons. As we conclude this introduction to winning, remember that the journey to success is not about a single moment of triumph, but rather a series of strategic decisions and actions that compound over time. It's about developing a mindset that embraces challenges, values growth, and persistently pursues goals. In the next chapter, we'll delve deeper into one of the most crucial aspects of winning, creating a clear vision. This foundational step will set the stage for all your future success, providing a North Star to guide your decisions and actions. Get ready to unlock the power of visionary thinking and learn how to craft a compelling vision that will drive you towards your goals. Before we go on, make sure to subscribe to Grow to the Top and hit the notification bell to receive more strategic knowledge that will supercharge your growth and help you win at everything you do. Chapter 2. Creating a Clear Vision Picture yourself standing at the helm of a ship, navigating through foggy waters. Without a clear destination in mind, you'd be sailing aimlessly, at the mercy of the currents. This is precisely why having a vision is so crucial in your journey to success. A clear vision acts as your compass, guiding every decision and action towards your ultimate goal. The power of vision in shaping success cannot be overstated. It serves as a powerful motivational tool, providing a constant reminder of what you're working towards. When the going gets tough, and it inevitably will, your vision will be the beacon that keeps you moving forward. It has a profound psychological effect, creating a sense of purpose and direction that can fuel your determination and resilience. Consider how a strong vision statement can inspire and motivate. It paints a vivid picture of a desirable future state, creating an emotional connection that drives action. This emotional resonance is what separates truly motivational visions from mere goals or objectives. When you can see, feel, and almost touch your envisioned future, you're much more likely to persevere through challenges to make it a reality. But a vision is more than just a dream or a wish. It's a commitment to a specific outcome, a declaration of what you intend to achieve or become. This is where the real power of vision comes into play, in its ability to align your actions with your aspirations. When you have a clear vision, decision-making becomes easier. You can evaluate opportunities and challenges through the lens of whether they bring you closer to or further from your vision. Aligning your actions with your vision requires practical steps and consistent effort. It involves regularly revisiting your vision, breaking it down into manageable goals, and ensuring that your daily activities contribute to these goals. This alignment creates a powerful synergy where even small actions can have a significant cumulative effect over time. Throughout history, we've seen numerous examples of visionary leaders who have shaped the course of business, politics, and social movements. These visionaries didn't just have big ideas, they had the ability to articulate their vision in a way that inspired others to join their cause. They understood that a powerful vision isn't just about personal achievement, 
but about creating a future that others want to be part of. In the business world, visionary leaders have transformed industries and created entirely new markets. They looked beyond the current state of affairs and imagined possibilities that others couldn't see. Their visions weren't just about profit or market share, but about fundamentally changing how people live and work. Similarly, in social movements, visionary leaders have driven significant societal changes by articulating a compelling vision of a better future. They understood the power of a shared vision to unite people and drive collective action. Their strategies often involved not just outlining the problem, but painting a vivid picture of what could be achieved through concerted effort. Now let's bring this concept of vision down to a personal level. Crafting your personal and professional vision is a crucial step in your journey to success. A well-crafted vision statement serves as a North Star, guiding your decisions and actions towards your ultimate goals. When creating a vision statement, whether for yourself or an organization, there are several key elements to consider. First and foremost, it should be clear and specific. Vague generalities won't provide the guidance you need. Your vision should paint a detailed picture of what success looks like for you. At the same time, your vision should be inspirational and motivational. It should excite you and others, creating an emotional connection that drives action. A truly effective vision statement makes you want to jump out of bed in the morning, eager to take steps towards making it a reality. Your vision should also be ambitious, yet achievable. It should stretch you beyond your current capabilities, encouraging growth and development. However, it shouldn't be so far-fetched that it feels impossible. The sweet spot is a vision that's challenging but attainable with dedicated effort. Another crucial aspect of creating a powerful vision is ensuring it aligns with your core values. Your values are the fundamental beliefs that guide your behavior and decision-making. When your vision aligns with these values, you're more likely to feel fulfilled as you work towards it. Identifying your core values requires honest self-reflection. What principles do you hold dear? What non-negotiables guide your decisions? These might include concepts like integrity, innovation, compassion, or excellence. Once you've identified these values, you can weave them into your vision, creating a future state that not only achieves your goals, but also honors your principles. The process of aligning your vision with your values often involves a personal values assessment. This can be done through various methods, from reflective journaling to structured assessment tools. The goal is to gain a clear understanding of what truly matters to you beyond surface-level desires or societal expectations. Once you've completed a values assessment, the next step is to integrate these insights into your vision. This might involve refining your vision to better reflect your values, or it could mean reframing your goals in a way that aligns more closely with your principles. The result is a vision that not only excites you, but also feels authentically aligned with who you are and what you stand for. Remember, creating a clear vision is not a one-time exercise. As you grow and evolve, your vision may need to be refined or even completely reimagined. The key is to regularly revisit your vision, ensuring it continues to inspire and guide you as you progress on your journey to success. As we conclude this exploration of vision, take a moment to imagine the future you want to create. See it clearly in your mind's eye. Feel the emotions associated with achieving that vision. This vivid mental image is the first step in turning your vision into reality. In the next chapter, we'll build on this foundation by exploring how to set achievable goals. With your vision as a guiding star, you'll learn how to break down your aspirations into concrete, actionable steps. Get ready to transform your vision from a distant dream into a series of attainable milestones, each bringing you closer to your ultimate success. Chapter 3, Setting Achievable Goals The crowd roars as the runner crosses the finish line, arms raised in triumph. This moment of victory wasn't born in the final sprint, but in the countless hours of training, the careful planning, and the relentless pursuit of clearly defined goals. Just as a marathon is run one step at a time, success in any endeavor is achieved through a series of well-planned, 
achievable goals. Setting goals is more than just listing your desires. It's a structured process that bridges the gap between your current reality and your envisioned future. Effective goal setting provides direction, motivates action, and allows you to measure your progress. It transforms your vision from a distant dream into a series of concrete, actionable steps. At the heart of effective goal setting lies the SMART framework. This acronym stands for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Relevant, and Time-Bound. Each of these elements plays a crucial role in crafting goals that are not just wishful thinking, but powerful drivers of action and achievement. Specific goals leave no room for ambiguity. Instead of saying, I want to be successful, a specific goal might be, I want to become the top performing sales representative in my company. The more precise you can be, the clearer your path to achievement becomes. Measurable goals provide concrete criteria for tracking your progress. This might involve numbers, percentages, or other quantifiable metrics. For instance, I want to increase my client base by 25% within the next six months is a measurable goal. This measurability allows you to gauge your progress and make adjustments as needed. Achievable goals stretch your abilities without setting you up for failure. While it's important to aim high, your goals should be within the realm of possibility given your current resources and constraints. An achievable goal challenges you but remains realistic. Relevant goals align with your broader objectives and values. Each goal you set should be a stepping stone towards your larger vision. Ask yourself, does this goal contribute to my overarching aims? Does it align with my values and priorities? Time-bound goals have a specific deadline. This sense of urgency motivates action and helps prevent procrastination. Whether it's a short-term goal to be achieved in weeks or a long-term goal spanning years, having a clear time frame is crucial. When crafting your goals, it's important to distinguish between long-term and short-term objectives. Long-term goals are your big picture aspirations, often aligned closely with your overall vision. These might span several years and represent significant life or career milestones. Short-term goals, on the other hand, are the stepping stones towards your long-term objectives. These are typically achievable within a shorter time frame weeks, months, or a year. They provide a sense of progress and accomplishment, keeping you motivated as you work towards your bigger goals. The relationship between long-term and short-term goals is crucial. Your short-term goals should always be in service of your long-term objectives. Think of them as the individual steps in a staircase, each one bringing you closer to the top. As you set your goals, it's vital to prioritize effectively. Not all goals are created equal, and trying to pursue too many objectives simultaneously can lead to overwhelm and lack of progress. This is where tools like the Importance versus Urgency Matrix come into play. This matrix, also known as the Eisenhower Matrix, helps you categorize your goals and tasks based on their urgency and importance. It consists of four quadrants, important and urgent, important but not urgent, urgent but not important, and neither urgent nor important. Goals that fall into the important and urgent quadrant require immediate attention. These are your top priorities, often involving deadlines or critical issues that need addressing. Important but not urgent goals are where the magic happens. These are the activities that contribute to your long-term success and personal growth. They require proactive planning and consistent effort. Urgent but not important tasks are often distractions that feel pressing but don't contribute significantly to your major goals. While these may need to be addressed, be cautious about letting them consume too much of your time and energy. Finally, tasks that are neither urgent nor important should be minimized or eliminated where possible. By categorizing your goals and tasks in this way, you can ensure you're focusing your energy on the activities that truly matter. It allows you to say no to distractions and yes to opportunities that align with your vision and long-term objectives. Balancing multiple objectives is another crucial skill in goal setting. Life rarely allows us to focus on just one goal at a time. You might be simultaneously working towards career advancement, personal health improvements, and relationship goals. The key is to find synergies where possible 
and to allocate your time and energy strategically. When goals conflict, it's important to revisit your values and overall vision. Which goal aligns more closely with your long-term aspirations? Which will have the most significant impact on your life? Sometimes, you may need to temporarily deprioritize one goal to make progress on another. The art lies in maintaining a dynamic balance that moves you forward across all important areas of your life. Effective prioritization often involves difficult decisions. It may mean saying no to good opportunities to say yes to great ones. It might require delegating or outsourcing tasks to free up time for high-priority goals. Time management techniques like time blocking can be invaluable, allowing you to dedicate focused periods to your most important objectives. As you work towards your goals, regular review and adjustment are crucial. Life is dynamic and circumstances change. What seemed like a critical goal six months ago might no longer align with your current situation or aspirations. Periodic review allows you to celebrate your progress, learn from setbacks, and recalibrate your goals as needed. Remember, the purpose of goal setting isn't to create a rigid, inflexible plan. Instead, it's about providing direction and focus to your efforts. Your goals should motivate and inspire you, not become a source of stress or limitation. Be willing to adapt your goals as you grow and as your understanding of what you truly want evolves. As we conclude this exploration of goal setting, take a moment to reflect on your current goals. Are they smart? Do they align with your vision and values? Are you effectively prioritizing your efforts? The answers to these questions can set the stage for powerful progress towards your aspirations. With your vision clear and your goals set, you're now ready to take the next crucial step on your journey to success. In the following chapter, we'll delve into the art of developing effective strategic plans. You'll learn how to transform your goals into actionable strategies, creating a roadmap that will guide you from where you are to where you want to be. Get ready to master the skills that will turn your aspirations into achievements. Chapter 4, Developing Effective Strategic Plans The general stands atop the hill, surveying the battlefield before him. In his mind, he sees not just the terrain and troops, but a complex web of possibilities, actions, and outcomes. This is the essence of strategic planning, the ability to look beyond the immediate and chart a course towards victory. In life, as in war, success often hinges on our ability to plan strategically. Strategic planning is the bridge between setting goals and achieving them. It's the roadmap that guides you from where you are to where you want to be. While goals define your destination, strategic plans outline the journey. They provide structure to your efforts, allowing you to navigate challenges and capitalize on opportunities along the way. At its core, a strategic plan consists of several key components. The vision we discussed earlier forms the foundation, providing the overarching direction. Next comes the mission, a statement that defines your purpose and the fundamental reason for your efforts. While the vision paints a picture of the future, the mission grounds you in the present, clarifying why you do what you do. Objectives form the next layer of your strategic plan, these are the specific, measurable outcomes you aim to achieve. They break down your vision into concrete milestones, providing clear targets to aim for. Well-crafted objectives should align with your SMART goals, ensuring they are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. With your objectives defined, the next step is to develop action plans. These are the detailed strategies and tactics you'll employ to reach your objectives. Action plans break down your objectives into specific tasks, assigning responsibilities, timelines, and resources. They answer the crucial question, how exactly will we achieve our goals? No strategic plan is complete without considering contingencies. The path to success is rarely smooth, and unforeseen obstacles are almost guaranteed. Contingency planning involves identifying potential risks and challenges, then developing strategies to mitigate or overcome them. It's about being prepared for the unexpected, ensuring that setbacks don't derail your entire plan. The process of strategic planning is not linear, but cyclical. It involves continuous assessment, adjustment, and refinement. 
This planning cycle typically begins with analysis, examining your current situation, including strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. From this analysis, you develop your strategies and action plans. Implementation follows, where you put your plans into action. But the cycle doesn't end there. Regular monitoring and evaluation are crucial, allowing you to assess your progress and the effectiveness of your strategies. Based on this evaluation, you may need to adjust your plans, leading back to the analysis phase. This iterative nature of planning ensures that your strategies remain relevant and effective in the face of changing circumstances. Several tools and techniques can aid in the strategic planning process. One of the most widely used is the SWOT analysis. SWOT stands for Strengths, Weaknesses, Opportunities, and Threats. This framework provides a structured way to evaluate both internal factors, strengths and weaknesses, and external factors, opportunities and threats, that can impact your success. When conducting a SWOT analysis, be honest and thorough. Strengths might include unique skills, valuable assets, or strong networks. Weaknesses could be areas where you lack expertise, resources, or experience. Opportunities are external factors that you could potentially leverage for success, such as market trends or new technologies. Threats are external challenges that could hinder your progress, like competition or economic downturns. The insights gained from a SWOT analysis can inform your strategic decisions. You might develop strategies to leverage your strengths and capitalize on opportunities while working to address weaknesses and mitigate threats. Remember, the goal isn't just to list these factors, but to use this information to shape your action plans. Another valuable tool in strategic planning is PEST analysis. PEST stands for Political, Economic, Social, and Technological Factors. This framework helps you understand the broader environment in which you're operating. By considering these macro-level factors, you can anticipate changes and trends that might impact your plans. Political factors might include regulations, government policies, or political stability. Economic factors encompass elements like economic growth rates, inflation, or market conditions. Social factors involve demographic trends, cultural norms, or lifestyle changes. Technological factors consider advancements in technology, innovation rates, or digital trends. Pest analysis is particularly useful in market analysis, helping you understand the landscape in which you're competing. It can reveal opportunities for growth or potential obstacles to success. By incorporating pest analysis into your strategic planning, you ensure that your strategies are not just internally coherent, but also aligned with external realities. Scenario planning is another powerful technique in strategic planning. This involves developing multiple possible future scenarios and planning for each. The goal isn't to predict the future accurately, but to prepare for a range of possibilities. By considering different scenarios, you can develop more flexible and robust strategies. When engaging in scenario planning, start by identifying key uncertainties that could significantly impact your plans. These might be market shifts, technological developments, or changes in consumer behavior. Then, create narratives around different combinations of these uncertainties. For each scenario, consider how you would need to adapt your strategies and what actions you might take. Scenario planning helps in managing uncertainty by allowing you to anticipate potential challenges and opportunities. It encourages flexible thinking and can reveal blind spots in your planning. Even if none of your imagined scenarios come to pass exactly as envisioned, the process of thinking through different possibilities will make your strategies more adaptable and resilient. As you develop your strategic plans, remember that the goal isn't to create a perfect, unchangeable blueprint. Instead, your plan should be a living document, one that guides your actions while remaining flexible enough to adapt to changing circumstances. The most effective strategic plans provide clear direction while allowing room for agility and innovation. Implementation is where many strategic plans falter. A beautifully crafted plan is worthless if it's not put into action. As you move from planning to execution, break down your strategies into concrete, actionable steps, assign responsibilities, set deadlines, and establish metrics to measure progress. 
Regular check-ins and progress reviews can help ensure that your plan doesn't gather dust on a shelf but remains a vital, guiding force in your efforts. Communication is crucial in strategic planning, especially if you're working with a team or organization. Ensure that everyone involved understands not just what needs to be done, but why. When people grasp the broader vision and their role in achieving it, they're more likely to be engaged and committed to the plan's success. As we conclude this exploration of strategic planning, take a moment to reflect on your own planning processes. Do you have a clear strategy for achieving your goals? Have you considered potential obstacles and opportunities? Are you prepared to adapt your plans as circumstances change? With a solid strategic plan in place, you're well equipped to navigate the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead. But success isn't achieved in isolation. In the next chapter, we'll delve into the crucial task of understanding your competition. You'll learn how to analyze the competitive landscape, identify your unique strengths, and position yourself for success in any arena. Prepare to sharpen your competitive edge and elevate your strategic thinking to new heights. Chapter 5. Understanding Your Competition The seasoned chess player doesn't just focus on her own pieces. She constantly analyzes her opponent's position, anticipating moves and planning countermoves. In the game of success, understanding your competition is just as crucial. It's not about obsession or imitation, but about gaining the insights necessary to position yourself effectively in any competitive landscape. Knowing your competition begins with a deep understanding of your market and industry. This goes beyond surface-level knowledge of who your competitors are. It involves comprehending the dynamics at play, the trends shaping the landscape, and the forces driving change. This understanding forms the foundation upon which you can build effective strategies and make informed decisions. Market analysis is a key tool in gaining this understanding. It involves researching market size, growth rates, customer segments, and buying patterns. Look for data on market share, pricing trends, and distribution channels. Pay attention to emerging technologies or business models that could disrupt the status quo. The goal is to paint a comprehensive picture of the environment in which you're competing. Industry trends and insights are equally important. These might include regulatory changes, shifts in consumer preferences, or technological advancements. Stay informed through industry publications, conferences, and expert analyses. Remember, trends can be both opportunities and threats. The key is to identify them early and position yourself accordingly. With a solid grasp of your market and industry, the next step is to identify your competitors and understand their strengths and weaknesses. Start by casting a wide net. Your competitors aren't just those offering identical products or services. Consider indirect competitors who solve the same customer problems in different ways, as well as potential new entrants who could disrupt the market. For each competitor, conduct a thorough analysis. What are their core offerings? How do they position themselves in the market? What are their pricing strategies? Look at their marketing messages, customer reviews, and financial performance if available. Try to understand their business model and what drives their success. Pay particular attention to your competitors' strengths. What do they do well? Where do they have an advantage over you? Understanding these strengths isn't about feeling inadequate, but about identifying areas where you need to improve or differentiate yourself. Equally important is identifying your competitors' weaknesses. Where do they fall short? What complaints do their customers have? These weaknesses represent opportunities for you to differentiate yourself and capture market share. One powerful tool for analyzing your competition is the SWOT analysis we discussed earlier. Apply this framework to each of your major competitors. Identify their strengths and weaknesses, internal factors, as well as the opportunities and threats they face, external factors. When conducting a SWOT analysis on competitors, be as objective as possible. It's easy to underestimate competitors or overstate their weaknesses. Strive for an honest, clear-eyed assessment. Remember, the goal isn't to criticize, but to understand. Competitor profiling is another valuable technique. 
This involves creating detailed profiles of your key competitors, including information on their history, leadership, financial performance, and strategic direction. Try to understand their goals, strategies, and tactics. What drives their decision-making? How are they likely to respond to market changes or competitive moves? As you build these profiles, look for patterns and insights. Are there common strategies among successful competitors? Are there gaps in the market that no one is addressing? These insights can inform your own strategic planning, helping you identify opportunities for differentiation or areas where you need to shore up your capabilities. Understanding your competition isn't a one-time task, but an ongoing process. Markets evolve, new competitors emerge, and existing ones change their strategies. Continuous monitoring is essential to stay ahead of the curve. Set up systems to keep track of your competitors' activities. This might include following their social media accounts, subscribing to their newsletters, or setting up Google alerts for news about them. Regularly review their websites and marketing materials for changes in messaging or offerings. Industry events and trade shows can be gold mines of competitive intelligence. Attend these events not just to promote your own offerings, but to gather information about your competitors and the broader market landscape. As you gather this competitive intelligence, the key is to use it effectively. The goal isn't to simply copy your competitors, but to understand the competitive landscape so you can chart your own unique course. Use your insights to identify opportunities for differentiation, to anticipate competitive moves, and to shore up your own weaknesses. Staying ahead of the competition often requires innovation and differentiation. Use your understanding of the competitive landscape to identify gaps in the market or unmet customer needs. These represent opportunities for you to create unique value propositions that set you apart from the competition. Innovation doesn't always mean creating something entirely new. It can involve finding new ways to solve existing problems, combining ideas in novel ways, or applying successful strategies from other industries to your own. The key is to continually look for ways to add value that your competitors aren't. Differentiation is about clearly communicating what makes you unique. This could be based on product features, customer service, pricing, brand identity, or any other factor that customers value. The goal is to occupy a distinct and valuable position in the minds of your target audience. Remember, the ultimate judge of your competitive position is your customer. Regular customer feedback and market research are crucial. Understand what your customers value how they perceive you relative to competitors, and what would make them choose you over alternatives. As you work to understand and outmaneuver your competition, maintain a balance between focus and awareness. While it's important to keep an eye on your competitors, don't let this awareness paralyze you or lead to constant reactionary moves. Use your competitive insights to inform your strategy, but stay true to your own vision and values. Ethical considerations are important in competitive analysis. While it's perfectly acceptable to gather publicly available information, avoid any tactics that could be considered unethical or illegal. Your reputation and integrity are far more valuable than any short-term competitive advantage. As we conclude this exploration of understanding your competition, take a moment to reflect on your own competitive landscape. Do you have a clear picture of who your competitors are and what they offer? Are you aware of the trends shaping your industry? Have you identified opportunities for differentiation and innovation? Armed with a deep understanding of your competition and market landscape, you're well positioned to make strategic decisions that will set you apart. But success isn't just about outmaneuvering external competitors. In the next chapter, we'll turn our attention inward focusing on the crucial task of building a winning team. You'll learn how to identify and leverage complementary skills, align your team with your vision, and create a culture of success. Prepare to unlock the power of collective effort and take your pursuit of victory to new heights. Chapter 6, Building a Winning Team The orchestra conductor raises her baton, and with a subtle gesture, a symphony of sound fills the air. Each musician, an expert in their own right, 
plays their part in perfect harmony with the others. This is the power of a well-coordinated team, individuals with diverse skills coming together to create something greater than the sum of its parts. Building a winning team is not just about assembling a group of talented individuals. It's about creating a cohesive unit that shares a common vision, complements each other's strengths, and works in unison towards shared goals. Whether you're leading a business, a sports team, or a community project, the principles of building a winning team remain the same. The first step in building a strong team is surrounding yourself with complementary skills and strengths. No individual, no matter how talented, possesses all the skills necessary for complex endeavors. The key is to identify your own strengths and weaknesses, then seek out team members who can fill the gaps. Start by conducting an honest assessment of your own abilities. What are you exceptionally good at? What areas do you struggle with? This self-awareness is crucial, not just for identifying complementary skills, but also for effective leadership. Understanding your own limitations allows you to appreciate and leverage the strengths of others. When selecting team members, look beyond just technical skills or experience. Consider factors like problem-solving abilities, communication skills, adaptability, and emotional intelligence. A diverse team with a range of perspectives and approaches is often more innovative and resilient than a homogeneous one. Remember, complementary doesn't mean identical. In fact, some degree of constructive conflict can be beneficial, pushing the team to consider different viewpoints and arrive at better solutions. The goal is to create a balance where different strengths and perspectives come together harmoniously. Equally important to skills and strengths is alignment with your vision and values. A team that shares your fundamental beliefs and aspirations is more likely to be motivated, engaged, and committed to success. This alignment creates a sense of purpose that can carry the team through challenges and setbacks. When building your team, communicate your vision clearly. What are you trying to achieve? Why is it important? How does each team member's role contribute to this larger goal? When people understand the bigger picture and see how their efforts fit into it, they're more likely to be invested in the team's success. Values alignment is just as crucial. What principles guide your decision-making? What behaviors do you expect from team members? Be explicit about these values and look for individuals who naturally embody them. Remember, skills can be taught, but values are deeply ingrained and much harder to change. As you build your team, it's essential to understand your own strengths and weaknesses in depth. This goes beyond a surface-level assessment of skills. It involves understanding what truly energizes you what you're passionate about, and where you excel without effort. Identifying your strengths isn't just about listing things you're good at. It's about recognizing the activities that make you feel strong, the tasks that you look forward to, the work that leaves you feeling fulfilled rather than drained. These are your true strengths, and leveraging them is key to both personal satisfaction and team success. Equally important is recognizing your weaknesses. These aren't just areas where you lack skill, but tasks or responsibilities that consistently drain your energy or lead to subpar results. Acknowledging these weaknesses isn't a sign of failure. It's a mark of self-awareness and maturity. The goal in identifying weaknesses isn't to eliminate them entirely. That's often neither possible nor necessary. Instead, the aim is to manage them effectively. This might involve delegating tasks in these areas to team members who are stronger in them or developing systems and processes to mitigate their impact. Remember, a weakness in one context can be a strength in another. What matters is how these traits align with your role and responsibilities. A trait that's a weakness in your current position might be a strength in a different role or industry. Once you've assembled your team, effective management becomes crucial. Communication is at the heart of successful team management. Clear, concise, and respectful communication fosters understanding, prevents misunderstandings, and builds trust within the team. Establish regular channels for communication, both formal and informal. This might include team meetings, one-on-one check-ins, and digital collaboration tools. 
Encourage open dialogue where team members feel comfortable sharing ideas, concerns, and feedback. Active listening is a key component of effective communication. Make a conscious effort to truly hear and understand your team members. Ask clarifying questions, provide thoughtful responses, and demonstrate that you value their input. Transparency is another crucial aspect of communication. Share information openly with your team, including both successes and challenges. When people understand the full picture, they're better equipped to contribute meaningfully and feel more invested in the team's outcomes. Empowering team members is another vital aspect of effective team management. This involves delegating tasks, providing necessary resources, and supporting growth and development. Empowerment isn't about abdicating responsibility, but about trusting your team members and giving them the autonomy to excel in their roles. Delegation is a skill that many leaders struggle with, but it's essential for building a strong team. Effective delegation involves matching tasks to team members' strengths, providing clear instructions and expectations, and offering support without micromanaging. When done well, delegation not only lightens your workload, but also provides growth opportunities for your team members. Providing resources goes beyond just material or financial support. It includes offering time, guidance, and access to information or networks that can help team members succeed in their roles. Consider what each team member needs to excel and strive to provide it. Supporting growth and development is crucial for maintaining a high-performing team. Encourage continuous learning, provide opportunities for skill development, and offer constructive feedback regularly. When team members feel that you're invested in their growth, they're more likely to be engaged and committed to the team's success. Creating a positive team culture is another key aspect of building a winning team. Culture isn't just about having a fun work environment or team building activities, although these can play a role. It's about the values, behaviors, and attitudes that permeate your team's interactions and work. A strong team culture fosters trust, encourages collaboration, and promotes accountability. It creates an environment where team members feel safe to take risks, share ideas, and learn from failures. This kind of culture doesn't happen by accident. It requires conscious effort and consistent reinforcement. Lead by example in embodying the culture you want to create. If you value open communication, be transparent in your own interactions. If you want to foster innovation, demonstrate a willingness to try new approaches and learn from failures. Recognize and celebrate behaviors that align with your desired culture. This doesn't always have to be formal recognition. Sometimes a simple acknowledgement in a team meeting can be powerful. The key is to consistently reinforce the behaviors and attitudes you want to see in your team. Conflict is inevitable in any team, but how you handle it can make the difference between a dysfunctional group and a high-performing team. View conflicts as opportunities for growth and learning rather than problems to be avoided. Encourage respectful disagreement and teach your team members how to engage in constructive conflict resolution. As your team grows and evolves, be prepared to adapt your leadership style. Different stages of team development may require different approaches. A newly formed team might need more direct guidance, while a mature, high-performing team might thrive with a more hands-off approach. Regular evaluation and feedback are crucial for maintaining a winning team. This includes both assessing the team's performance as a whole and providing individual feedback to team members. Create a culture of continuous improvement where feedback is seen as a tool for growth rather than criticism. Remember that building a winning team is an ongoing process, not a one-time event. It requires constant attention, adjustment, and nurturing. Be patient. A truly high-performing team doesn't come together overnight. It takes time for individuals to learn to work together effectively, to build trust, and to align their efforts seamlessly. As we conclude this exploration of building a winning team, take a moment to reflect on your own team-building efforts. Have you surrounded yourself with complementary skills and strengths? Does your team share a common vision and values? Are you effectively empowering your team members and fostering a positive team culture? 
With a strong team in place, you're well positioned to tackle even the most challenging goals. But having a great team is just one piece of the puzzle. In the next chapter, we'll delve into the crucial topic of effective execution. You'll learn how to turn your plans into action, overcome obstacles, and drive results. Prepare to bridge the gap between strategy and success, transforming your visions and plans into tangible achievements. Chapter 7, Effective Execution. The blueprint is perfect, the team assembled, but the building remains unbuilt. This is the challenge of execution, the critical step that transforms plans into reality. In the pursuit of success, effective execution is often the difference between visionaries and achievers, between those who dream and those who do. Execution is where the rubber meets the road. It's the process of turning your carefully crafted plans into tangible results. Even the most brilliant strategy is worthless if it's not implemented effectively. This is why execution is often considered the most crucial phase in the journey to success. At the heart of effective execution lies the ability to break down your grand vision into actionable steps. This process begins with creating detailed action plans and timelines. An action plan is essentially a roadmap that outlines the specific tasks needed to achieve your objectives. It answers the fundamental questions. What needs to be done? Who will do it? When will it be completed? When creating your action plan, start by listing all the tasks required to achieve your goal. Be as specific as possible. Vague directives like improve marketing are less useful than concrete tasks such as develop a social media content calendar for the next quarter. The more detailed your plan, the easier it will be to execute. Once you've identified the necessary tasks, it's time to assign responsibilities. Who is the best person to handle each task? Consider team members' skills, experience, and current workload when making these assignments. Clear ownership of tasks is crucial for accountability and efficient execution. Setting deadlines and milestones is the next critical step. Deadlines create a sense of urgency and help prevent procrastination. Milestones, on the other hand, are significant checkpoints along the way to your goal. They allow you to measure progress and celebrate small wins, which can be motivating for the team. When setting deadlines, be realistic but ambitious. Consider the complexity of each task, potential obstacles, and the resources available. It's often helpful to work backwards from your ultimate deadline, allocating time for each task along the way. With your action plan in place, the next crucial aspect of execution is delegation and resource allocation. Effective delegation is an art that many leaders struggle to master, but it's essential for successful execution, especially in complex projects or organizations. Delegation isn't about offloading unwanted tasks. It's about matching tasks to the right people, considering their skills, development needs, and current workload. When delegating, provide clear instructions and expectations. Explain not just what needs to be done, but why it's important and how it fits into the bigger picture. Empower your team members by giving them the authority to make decisions related to their tasks. This doesn't mean abandoning oversight, but rather finding the right balance between guidance and autonomy. Regular check-ins can help ensure tasks are on track without micromanaging. Resource allocation is equally important in execution. This involves not just financial resources, but also time, personnel, and tools. Ensure that each task or project has the necessary resources to succeed. This might involve reallocating resources from less critical areas or securing additional resources if needed. As you move forward with execution, you'll inevitably encounter obstacles. These challenges are a normal part of any significant endeavor but how you handle them can make or break your success. Common execution challenges include scope creep, where the project expands beyond its original boundaries, resource constraints, unexpected external factors, and team conflicts. The key to overcoming these obstacles is to anticipate them as much as possible and have strategies in place to address them. Regularly review your progress against your plan. Are you meeting your milestones? If not, why? This ongoing assessment allows you to identify potential issues early and make necessary adjustments. Be prepared to adapt your plans as circumstances change.
flexibility is crucial in execution. When facing obstacles, encourage your team to approach them with a problem-solving mindset. Foster an environment where team members feel comfortable raising issues and proposing solutions. Often, those closest to the work have the best insights into how to overcome challenges. Communication is vital throughout the execution process. Regular status updates keep everyone informed and aligned. These updates should cover progress, challenges, and any changes to the plan. Be transparent about both successes and setbacks. This openness builds trust and allows for collective problem solving. Celebrate milestones and small wins along the way. Recognition of progress, no matter how small, can boost morale and maintain momentum. These celebrations also provide opportunities to reflect on what's working well and what could be improved. As you execute your plans, stay focused on your ultimate objectives. It's easy to get caught up in the day-to-day -day tasks and lose sight of the bigger picture. Regularly remind yourself and your team of the vision you're working towards. This sense of purpose can be a powerful motivator, especially when facing challenges. At the same time, don't be afraid to adjust your plans if circumstances change or new information comes to light. Effective execution isn't about rigidly sticking to a plan. It's about achieving your objectives. If a better path to your goal becomes apparent, be willing to change course. Remember that execution is not a one-time event, but an ongoing process. Even after you've achieved a major goal, there will be new objectives to pursue, new challenges to overcome. The skills of effective execution, breaking down goals, delegating effectively, overcoming obstacles, are ones you'll use throughout your journey to success. As we conclude this exploration of effective execution, take a moment to reflect on your own execution skills. Are you able to transform your plans into action? Do you effectively delegate and allocate resources? How do you handle obstacles and setbacks? Your ability to execute effectively will largely determine your success in turning your visions into reality. With a solid understanding of execution, you're well-equipped to bring your plans to life. But success often requires more than just action. It requires making the right decisions at crucial moments. In the next chapter, we'll delve into the art of effective decision-making. You'll learn how to gather and analyze information, weigh options, and make choices that propel you towards your goals. Prepare to sharpen your decision-making skills and navigate the complex landscape of choices that lie ahead on your path to success. Chapter 8, Effective Decision-Making. In the dim light of dawn, the mountain climber stands at a fork in the trail. One path looks easier but longer, the other more challenging but potentially quicker. Time is of the essence, but so is energy conservation. This moment of decision, seemingly small, could determine the success or failure of the entire expedition. Such is the nature of decision-making, a constant process of weighing options, considering consequences, and charting the course of our actions. Effective decision-making is a cornerstone of success in any endeavor. Whether you're leading a business, managing a project, or navigating your personal life, the quality of your decisions largely determines your outcomes. Yet decision-making is often more complex than it appears, influenced by a myriad of factors including information, emotions, biases, and external pressures. The decision-making process begins with gathering information. In our information-rich age, the challenge is often not finding information, but filtering and interpreting it effectively. Start by clearly defining the decision you need to make. What exactly are you trying to decide? What are the key factors that will influence this decision? Once you've defined the decision, cast a wide net in your information gathering. Look beyond the obvious sources. Consult experts, analyze data, and seek out diverse perspectives. Be particularly attentive to information that challenges your preconceptions this can help counteract confirmation bias, our tendency to favor information that confirms our existing beliefs. As you gather information, focus on quality over quantity. More information isn't always better if it leads to analysis paralysis. Strive for a balance between having enough information to make an informed decision and avoiding unnecessary delay. With your information in hand, the next step is to analyze and evaluate your options. 
This is where techniques like pros and cons lists, decision matrices, and scenario planning can be valuable. A pros and cons list is simple but effective, forcing you to consider both the positive and negative aspects of each option. A decision matrix allows you to evaluate options against multiple criteria, assigning weights to each criterion based on its importance. This can be particularly useful for complex decisions with many factors to consider. Scenario planning involves imagining different possible outcomes for each option. What's the best case scenario? The worst case? The most likely? This exercise can help you anticipate potential consequences and prepare for various outcomes. As you weigh your options, pay attention to both the tangible and intangible factors. Quantitative data is important, but don't ignore qualitative aspects like intuition, values alignment, and potential impact on relationships or culture. Consider the risks and benefits of each option. What could go wrong? What's the potential upside? How do these balance out? Remember that the option with the highest potential reward isn't always the best choice if it also carries unacceptable risks. Time is often a critical factor in decision-making. How urgent is this decision? What are the consequences of delay? Sometimes, waiting for more information or a better opportunity is the wisest choice. Other times, decisive action is necessary, even with incomplete information. Once you've thoroughly analyzed your options, it's time to make a decision. This step can be challenging, especially for consequential decisions. It's natural to feel some anxiety or doubt. However, remember that in many cases, making a timely decision is better than endlessly deliberating. When you make your decision, commit to it fully. Half-hearted implementation can undermine even the best decision. This doesn't mean ignoring new information if it comes to light, but it does mean giving your chosen course of action a fair chance to succeed. After making a decision, take time to reflect on the process. What went well? What could you have done differently? This reflection can help you refine your decision-making skills for future situations. While this structured approach to decision-making is valuable, it's also important to recognize the role of intuition. Our subconscious minds often process information in ways our conscious minds cannot, leading to gut feelings that can be surprisingly accurate. While intuition shouldn't be the sole basis for important decisions, it shouldn't be ignored either. The key is to strike a balance between analytical thinking and intuitive insights. As you develop your decision-making skills, be aware of common pitfalls that can lead to poor choices. One of the most pervasive is confirmation bias, which we touched on earlier. This is our tendency to seek out information that confirms our existing beliefs while ignoring or discounting contradictory evidence. To counteract confirmation bias, actively seek out information that challenges your initial thoughts. Play devil's advocate with your own ideas. Encourage team members to voice dissenting opinions. By consciously exposing yourself to diverse viewpoints, you can make more balanced and informed decisions. Another common pitfall is the sunk cost fallacy. This is the tendency to continue investing in a course of action because of past investments, even when it's no longer the best option. Remember, past costs that cannot be recovered should not influence future decisions. Each decision should be based on its own merits and future prospects. Groupthink is another danger, particularly in team settings. This occurs when the desire for harmony or conformity leads to irrational or dysfunctional decision-making. To avoid groupthink, encourage open debate and dissenting opinions. Consider appointing a devil's advocate to challenge the group's thinking. Seek input from outside the group when possible. Emotional decision-making can also lead to poor choices. While emotions shouldn't be completely discounted, they can provide valuable intuitive insights. It's important to recognize when emotions are clouding your judgment. If you're feeling particularly stressed, angry, or euphoric, it might be wise to delay important decisions, if possible. Time pressure can also impair decision-making. When faced with a tight deadline, there's a tendency to rush to a decision without fully considering all options. While some decisions do require quick action, be wary of artificial time pressures. When possible, give yourself time to step back and consider the bigger picture.
Remember that decision-making is a skill that can be improved with practice. Each decision is an opportunity to learn and refine your process. Pay attention to the outcomes of your decisions. Were they what you expected? If not, why? This feedback loop is crucial for improving your decision-making over time. For particularly important or complex decisions, consider seeking advice from mentors or trusted advisors. They can provide valuable perspectives and help you see blind spots in your thinking. However, remember that the final decision and its consequences rest with you. As you navigate the complexities of decision-making, maintain a growth mindset. View challenges and setbacks not as failures, but as opportunities to learn and improve. Every decision, regardless of its outcome, holds lessons that can enhance your future decision-making skills. Effective decision-making is not about always making the right choice. That's an impossible standard given the complexities and uncertainties of life. Instead, it's about consistently making well-informed, thoughtful decisions that align with your goals and values. It's about learning from each decision and continuously refining your process. As we conclude this exploration of effective decision-making, reflect on your own decision-making process. Do you gather information systematically? Are you aware of your biases? How do you balance analysis with intuition? Your ability to make sound decisions in the face of uncertainty and complexity will be a key factor in your journey to success. With sharpened decision-making skills, you're better equipped to navigate the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead. But success isn't just about making the right choices. It's also about having the resilience to persist in the face of setbacks and the adaptability to thrive in changing circumstances. In the next chapter, we'll explore the crucial qualities of resilience and adaptability. You'll learn how to bounce back from failures, embrace change, and maintain your drive towards success even in the face of adversity. Prepare to cultivate the mental toughness and flexibility that will sustain you on your path to victory. Chapter 9, Building Resilience and Adaptability The boxer rises from the canvas, bruised but not beaten. The entrepreneur launches her third startup, having learned invaluable lessons from two previous failures. The species that survives is not the strongest or the most intelligent, but the one most responsive to change. These scenarios all illustrate a fundamental truth. In the pursuit of success, resilience and adaptability are not just advantageous, they are essential. Resilience is the ability to bounce back from setbacks, to persevere in the face of adversity. It's the quality that allows you to get knocked down seven times and stand up eight. Adaptability, on the other hand, is the capacity to adjust to new conditions, to be flexible in the face of change. Together, these traits form a powerful combination that can propel you towards success in even the most challenging circumstances. At the core of resilience lies the concept of grit, that blend of passion and perseverance that keeps you going when things get tough. Grit isn't about never feeling discouraged or never wanting to give up. It's about feeling all of those things and pushing forward anyway. It's about maintaining your determination and motivation over long periods, despite experiences with failure and adversity. Developing grit starts with identifying your core values and long-term goals. What really matters to you? What are you willing to struggle for? When you have a clear sense of purpose, it becomes easier to persist through challenges. You're not just enduring hardship for its own sake, but for something meaningful to you. Practice setting and achieving small goals to build your confidence and perseverance. Each small success reinforces your belief in your ability to overcome obstacles. Gradually increase the difficulty of your goals, always pushing slightly beyond your comfort zone. Cultivate a growth mindset, the belief that your abilities can be developed through dedication and hard work. This perspective allows you to see challenges as opportunities for growth rather than insurmountable obstacles. When you encounter a setback, ask yourself, what can I learn from this? How can I use this experience to improve? Resilience also involves learning from failure. Every setback, every mistake, every failure contains valuable lessons if you're willing to look for them. Develop the habit of conducting a post-mortem after every significant endeavor, whether successful or not. 
What went well? What didn't? What would you do differently next time? When analyzing failures, focus on factors within your control. It's easy to blame external circumstances, but this rarely leads to growth. Instead, look for areas where your actions or decisions influence the outcome. This isn't about self-blame, but about identifying opportunities for improvement. Remember that failure is not the opposite of success. It's a part of success. Nearly every significant achievement in history was preceded by multiple failures. Thomas Edison famously said of his many unsuccessful attempts to invent the light bulb, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. Embrace this perspective, seeing each failure as a step closer to success. While resilience helps you bounce back from setbacks, adaptability enables you to navigate change effectively. In today's fast-paced world, the ability to adapt is more crucial than ever. Markets shift, technologies evolve, and what worked yesterday may not work tomorrow. The most successful individuals and organizations are those that can pivot quickly in response to changing circumstances. Developing adaptability starts with cultivating a mindset of openness and flexibility. Be willing to question your assumptions and change your approach when necessary. Avoid becoming too attached to any particular way of doing things. Instead, focus on the outcomes you want to achieve and be open to different paths to get there. Stay curious and committed to lifelong learning. The more knowledge and skills you acquire, the more resources you have to draw upon when facing new challenges. Make a habit of stepping outside your comfort zone. Try new things, even if they seem unrelated to your current goals. You never know when a seemingly unrelated skill or piece of knowledge might become relevant. Practice scenario planning to enhance your adaptability. Regularly imagine different possible futures and how you might respond to them. This exercise helps you become more comfortable with uncertainty and more prepared for change when it comes. Develop your problem-solving skills. When faced with a new challenge, break it down into smaller, manageable parts. Look for creative solutions, drawing inspiration from diverse sources. The ability to approach problems from multiple angles will serve you well in adapting to new situations. Networking can also enhance your adaptability. Build relationships with people from diverse backgrounds and industries. These connections can provide fresh perspectives and ideas, helping you see opportunities and solutions you might otherwise miss. While being adaptable is crucial, it's equally important to know what shouldn't change. Your core values and long-term vision should remain constant even as your strategies and tactics evolve. This balance between steadfastness and flexibility is key to sustainable success. Resilience and adaptability are not just individual traits. They can also be cultivated within teams and organizations. As a leader, foster a culture that embraces challenges and views change as an opportunity rather than a threat. Encourage calculated risk-taking and create an environment where it's safe to fail and learn. Communicate openly about challenges and setbacks. When leaders are transparent about difficulties and how they're addressing them, it sets a powerful example. It shows that struggles are normal and can be overcome, reinforcing a resilient mindset throughout the organization. Provide opportunities for your team to build their resilience and adaptability. This might involve stretch assignments, cross-functional projects, or even simulated crisis scenarios. The more practice people have in dealing with challenges and change, the better equipped they'll be to handle real-world situations. Remember that building resilience and adaptability is an ongoing process. These aren't skills you develop once and then have forever. They require constant practice and refinement. Each challenge you face is an opportunity to strengthen these qualities. Self-care plays a crucial role in maintaining resilience and adaptability. It's difficult to bounce back from setbacks or adapt to change when you're exhausted or burnt out. Prioritize your physical and mental health. Ensure you're getting enough sleep, eating well, exercising regularly, and taking time for activities that recharge you. Mindfulness and meditation can be powerful tools for building resilience and adaptability. These practices can help you stay grounded in the present moment, reduce stress, 
and improve your ability to respond thoughtfully rather than react impulsively to challenges. Develop a strong support network. Resilience doesn't mean you have to face everything alone. Having people you can turn to for advice, encouragement, or simply a listening ear can make a huge difference in your ability to bounce back from setbacks. As you work on building your resilience and adaptability, be patient with yourself. These qualities develop over time through experience and conscious effort. Celebrate your progress, no matter how small. Each time you persevere through a challenge or successfully adapt to a change, you're strengthening these crucial skills. Remember that resilience and adaptability are not about never feeling discouraged or overwhelmed. It's normal and human to have these feelings. What matters is how you respond to these emotions, whether you allow them to defeat you or use them as fuel to push forward. In the face of significant setbacks or changes, it can be helpful to remind yourself of past challenges you've overcome. This can reinforce your belief in your ability to handle difficult situations. Keep a success journal where you record your achievements and how you overcame obstacles. This can be a powerful resource to turn to during tough times. As we conclude this exploration of resilience and adaptability, take a moment to reflect on your own experiences. Think of a time when you demonstrated resilience in the face of adversity. How did you push through? What did you learn from the experience? Now consider a situation where you successfully adapted to change. What enabled you to be flexible? Your capacity for resilience and adaptability will be key factors in your ability to achieve and sustain success. They will allow you to persist when others give up, to find opportunities where others see only obstacles, and to thrive in an ever-changing world. With these crucial qualities in your arsenal, you're well-equipped to face the challenges and changes that lie ahead on your path to success. But the journey doesn't end here. Continuous improvement and learning are essential for long-term success. In the next chapter, we'll explore how to cultivate a mindset of constant growth and development. You'll learn strategies for staying relevant in a fast-changing world and how to turn every experience into an opportunity for learning. Prepare to embark on a lifelong journey of growth and improvement that will keep you at the forefront of your field and continuously expanding your potential for success. Chapter 10, Continuous Improvement and Learning. The master craftsman, after decades of honing her skills, still begins each day by sharpening her tools. The world-renowned physician, despite years of accolades, devotes hours each week to studying the latest medical research. The chess grandmaster, having achieved the highest title in the game, continues to analyze and learn from every match. These scenarios illustrate a fundamental truth. In the pursuit of excellence, the journey of learning and improvement never ends. Continuous improvement and learning are not just beneficial for success, they are essential. In our rapidly changing world, standing still is equivalent to falling behind. The skills that brought you success yesterday may not be sufficient for the challenges of tomorrow. The most successful individuals and organizations are those that embrace a mindset of constant growth and development. The importance of continuous improvement lies in its ability to keep you relevant in a fast-changing world. Industries evolve, technologies advance, and consumer preferences shift. Those who fail to keep pace with these changes risk becoming obsolete. On the other hand, those who commit to ongoing learning and improvement position themselves to not just adapt to change, but to lead it. Embracing a growth mindset is at the heart of continuous improvement. This mindset, popularized by psychologist Carol Dweck, is the belief that your abilities and intelligence can be developed through dedication and hard work. It's the understanding that you're not limited by your current skills or knowledge, but have the potential to grow and improve throughout your life. Cultivating a growth mindset involves several key practices. First, view challenges as opportunities for growth rather than threats to your competence. When you encounter a difficult task or a new skill to learn, Approach it with curiosity and enthusiasm rather than fear or reluctance. Second, focus on the process of learning and improvement rather than just the outcomes. 
While achieving goals is important, the journey of getting there, the skills you develop, the knowledge you gain, the perseverance you cultivate is equally valuable. Third, embrace failure as a learning opportunity. Instead of being discouraged by setbacks, analyze them to understand what went wrong and how you can improve. Remember, every expert was once a beginner and every success story includes chapters of struggle and failure. Strategies for continuous learning are varied and should be tailored to your individual needs and circumstances. Reading and research are fundamental tools for staying up to date with industry trends and best practices. Make it a habit to regularly read books, articles, and research papers in your field. Don't limit yourself to just your specific area of expertise. Interdisciplinary knowledge can often lead to innovative insights and solutions. Attending conferences, workshops, and seminars can provide valuable opportunities for learning and networking. These events not only offer formal learning sessions, but also allow you to connect with peers and experts in your field. The conversations and exchanges that happen outside of the official program can often be just as valuable as the scheduled presentations. Online learning platforms have made education more accessible than ever before. Take advantage of MOOCs, massive open online courses, webinars, and online certifications to expand your knowledge and skills. Many of these resources are free or low cost, allowing you to explore new areas of interest without a significant financial commitment. Seeking feedback is another crucial strategy for continuous improvement. Actively ask for constructive criticism from colleagues, mentors, and even clients or customers. While it can be uncomfortable to hear about areas where you need improvement, this feedback is invaluable for your growth. When receiving feedback, listen with an open mind. Resist the urge to become defensive or to immediately explain away criticisms. Instead, thank the person for their input and take time to reflect on their comments. Even if you ultimately disagree with some of the feedback, there's almost always something you can learn from it. Mentorship can be a powerful tool for continuous improvement. A good mentor can provide guidance, share their experiences, and offer a different perspective on your challenges and opportunities. Don't limit yourself to just one mentor. Different people can offer valuable insights in different areas of your personal and professional life. Remember that learning doesn't just come from formal education or work-related activities. Every experience in life can be an opportunity for growth if you approach it with the right mindset. Travel can broaden your perspective and expose you to new ideas. Hobbies can develop skills that unexpectedly prove useful in your professional life. Even everyday interactions and challenges can provide lessons if you're attentive to them. Reflection is a key component of the learning process. Regular self-reflection allows you to internalize your experiences and extract meaningful lessons from them. Consider keeping a learning journal where you record your experiences, insights, and areas for improvement. Review this journal periodically to track your progress and identify patterns in your learning and growth. As you commit to continuous improvement, it's important to strike a balance between breadth and depth of knowledge. While it's valuable to have a broad understanding of many areas, true expertise requires deep knowledge in specific domains. Identify the core skills and knowledge areas that are most critical for your success and focus on developing deep expertise in these areas while maintaining a broader awareness of related fields. Remember that continuous improvement isn't just about acquiring new knowledge, it's also about refining and updating your existing skills and practices. Regularly review your work processes and habits. Are there areas where you can be more efficient? Are there new tools or techniques you could adopt to improve your performance? Creating a personal learning plan can help structure your continuous improvement efforts. Set specific learning goals for yourself, both short-term and long-term. These might include skills you want to develop, subjects you want to study, or certifications you want to obtain. Break these goals down into actionable steps and set deadlines for yourself. As you pursue continuous improvement, be patient with yourself. Learning and growth take time, and progress isn't always linear. 
There will be periods of rapid advancement and periods where you feel stuck. Trust in the process and keep pushing forward, even when progress seems slow. Finally, remember that the goal of continuous improvement isn't perfection, it's progress. The joy should be in the journey of growth itself, not just in reaching a particular destination. By embracing a mindset of lifelong learning and continuous improvement, you position yourself for sustained success and fulfillment in both your personal and professional life. As we conclude this exploration of continuous improvement and learning, take a moment to reflect on your own growth journey. What are you currently doing to improve your skills and knowledge? What areas of your life or work could benefit from more focused learning efforts? Remember, the commitment to continuous improvement is one of the most powerful tools you have for achieving and maintaining success in all areas of your life. With a mindset of continuous improvement, you're well-equipped to stay at the forefront of your field and to adapt to whatever challenges come your way. But success isn't just about constant growth. It's also about effectively managing your most precious resources, your time and energy. In the next chapter, we'll delve into strategies for time and energy management. You'll learn how to prioritize your efforts, increase your productivity, and maintain the energy levels needed for sustained high performance. Prepare to master the art of doing more with less and to unlock new levels of efficiency in your pursuit of success. Chapter 11, Managing Time and Energy. The CEO glances at her watch. It's only 10 a.m., but she's already closed two major deals, mentored a junior executive, and outlined a new company initiative. The athlete, despite a grueling training schedule, finds time to volunteer in his community and pursue a degree. The working mother, juggling career and family responsibilities, still manages to carve out time for her passion project. These scenarios all illustrate a fundamental truth. Success isn't just about what you do, but how efficiently and effectively you do it. Time and energy management are critical skills in the pursuit of success. No matter how talented or motivated you are, you're constrained by the finite nature of time and the limits of your personal energy. The most successful individuals aren't necessarily those who work the longest hours, but those who make the most of the time they have and manage their energy to maintain high performance over the long term. Let's start with time management. The core principle here is prioritization, focusing your time and attention on the activities that will have the greatest impact on your goals. One effective technique for this is the Eisenhower matrix, which categorizes tasks based on their urgency and importance. In this matrix, tasks fall into four quadrants. Important and urgent, do these immediately. Important but not urgent, schedule these. Urgent but not important, delegate these if possible. And neither urgent nor important, eliminate these. By categorizing your tasks this way, you can ensure you're focusing on what truly matters rather than just what seems pressing in the moment. Another powerful time management technique is the Pomodoro Technique. This involves working in focused 25-minute intervals, called pomodoros, followed by short 5-minute breaks. After four pomodoros, you take a longer break of 15 to 30 minutes. This technique leverages the psychology of time boxing, the idea that we're more focused and productive when we work within defined time constraints. The Pomodoro technique helps in several ways. It breaks work into manageable chunks, reducing the likelihood of burnout, it creates a sense of urgency that can boost focus and productivity, and the regular breaks help maintain energy and concentration over longer periods. Effective delegation is another crucial aspect of time management, especially as you take on more responsibilities or leadership roles. Many people struggle with delegation, either because they feel they can do the task better themselves or because they're uncomfortable asking others for help. However, Learning to delegate effectively can dramatically increase your productivity and free up your time for high-impact activities. When delegating, be clear about expectations, deadlines, and the level of authority you're granting. Provide necessary resources and be available for questions or guidance. Remember, effective delegation isn't about offloading unwanted tasks. 
It's about matching tasks to the right people and empowering others to contribute and grow. Time blocking is another effective strategy for managing your time. This involves scheduling specific blocks of time for different types of activities. For example, you might block out your most productive hours for deep, focused work, schedule meetings in the afternoon, and reserve time for email and administrative tasks at specific times of the day. By grouping similar tasks together and giving yourself dedicated time for different activities, you can reduce the mental energy spent on task switching and create a more structured, productive day. While these time management techniques are valuable, it's equally important to manage your energy. You can have all the time in the world, but if you're exhausted or burnt out, you won't be able to use that time effectively. Energy management starts with understanding your personal energy patterns. Are you a morning person or a night owl? When during the day do you feel most focused and productive? When do you typically experience energy dips? By understanding these patterns, you can schedule your most important or challenging tasks for when your energy is highest. Physical self-care is fundamental to energy management. This includes getting adequate sleep, eating a balanced diet, and engaging in regular physical exercise. These basic health practices have a profound impact on your energy levels, cognitive function, and overall well-being. Prioritize your sleep. While it might be tempting to cut sleep to gain more working hours, this is often counterproductive. Lack of sleep impairs cognitive function, creativity, and decision-making. Most adults need seven to nine hours of sleep per night for optimal functioning. Your diet also plays a crucial role in your energy levels. Avoid heavy meals that can lead to energy crashes. Instead, opt for balanced meals with a mix of complex carbohydrates, lean proteins, and healthy fats. Stay hydrated throughout the day. Even mild dehydration can impact your energy and cognitive function. Regular exercise is another key component of energy management. Physical activity not only improves your overall health, but also boosts energy levels, reduces stress, and enhances cognitive function. Find a form of exercise you enjoy and make it a regular part of your routine. Stress management is another crucial aspect of energy management. While some stress can be motivating, chronic stress is a major energy drain. Develop strategies for managing stress, such as mindfulness meditation, deep breathing exercises, or engaging in hobbies you find relaxing. Learn to recognize the signs of burnout and take proactive steps to prevent it. These signs might include chronic fatigue, decreased motivation, increased irritability, or a sense of cynicism about your work. If you notice these signs, it's crucial to step back and reassess your workload and self-care practices. Taking regular breaks throughout the day is important for maintaining energy levels. Use techniques like the Pomodoro method mentioned earlier, or simply set reminders to stand up, stretch, or take a short walk every hour or so. These brief breaks can help refresh your mind and prevent fatigue. Consider incorporating mindfulness practices into your daily routine. Even short periods of mindfulness meditation can help reduce stress, improve focus, and boost overall well-being. Apps like Headspace or Calm can be helpful for getting started with mindfulness practice. Remember that energy management isn't just about your workday. How you spend your time outside of work also impacts your overall energy and productivity. Make time for activities that recharge you, whether that's spending time with loved ones, pursuing hobbies, or simply having quiet time to yourself. As you implement these time and energy management strategies, remember that what works best can vary from person to person. Experiment with different techniques and pay attention to what helps you feel most productive and energized. Be willing to adjust your approach as your circumstances or needs change. Finally, don't forget the importance of downtime. While it's important to be productive, it's equally important to have periods of rest and relaxation. These moments of downtime are not just enjoyable, they're essential for recharging your energy, stimulating creativity, and maintaining long-term productivity and well-being. As we conclude this exploration of time and energy management, take a moment to reflect on your own habits. How effectively are you managing your time? Are you prioritizing the right tasks? 
How well are you managing your energy throughout the day? Remember, mastering these skills is an ongoing process, but even small improvements can lead to significant gains in your productivity and overall success. With effective time and energy management strategies in place, you're well-equipped to make the most of your resources in pursuit of your goals. But success isn't achieved in isolation. It often depends on the strength of your network and your ability to build beneficial relationships. In the next chapter, we'll delve into the art of strategic networking. You'll learn how to build and leverage a valuable network, creating connections that can open doors, provide support, and accelerate your journey to success. Prepare to master the skills of relationship building and discover the power of strategic networking in achieving your goals. Chapter 12, Strategic Networking. The entrepreneur walks into the conference room, a warm smile on her face. She doesn't know everyone here, but by the end of the evening, she'll have made several valuable connections that will prove crucial to her business's growth. The recent graduate, armed with little more than enthusiasm and a well-crafted elevator pitch, leaves the industry mixer with three promising job leads. The seasoned professional, through a casual conversation at a charity event, stumbles upon the solution to a problem that's been plaguing his team for months. These scenarios all illustrate a fundamental truth. In the world of success, it's not just what you know, but who you know, and more importantly, how you leverage those connections. Strategic networking is about more than collecting business cards or growing your list of social media connections. It's about building and nurturing meaningful relationships that can support your personal and professional growth. A strong network can provide opportunities, knowledge, support, and resources that can significantly accelerate your journey to success. The importance of networking lies in its ability to open doors that might otherwise remain closed. Many opportunities, job openings, business partnerships, mentorship relationships are never publicly advertised. They're filled through personal connections and recommendations. By building a strong network, you increase your chances of being in the right place at the right time when these opportunities arise. Moreover, your network can be an invaluable source of knowledge and insights. The collective experience and expertise of your network can help you navigate challenges, spot trends, and make informed decisions. In a rapidly changing world, having access to diverse perspectives and up-to-date information can be a significant competitive advantage. Building a valuable network starts with identifying key contacts. These aren't necessarily the most famous or influential people in your industry. Instead, focus on individuals who align with your goals and values and with whom you can build mutually beneficial relationships. Consider different types of connections that could be valuable. These might include mentors who can offer guidance and wisdom, peers who can provide support and collaboration opportunities, and individuals in adjacent industries who can offer fresh perspectives. Don't neglect weak ties, acquaintances or friends of friends who can often provide access to new information and opportunities outside your immediate circle. When it comes to initial engagement, authenticity is key. Approach networking with a genuine interest in others and a willingness to add value, not just take from the relationship. Prepare an elevator pitch, a brief, compelling description of who you are and what you do, but use it as a starting point for conversation, not a sales pitch. Listen more than you speak. Show genuine interest in others' experiences and perspectives. Ask thoughtful questions that demonstrate your engagement and create opportunities for meaningful conversation. Remember, the goal is to build relationships, not just exchange contact information. Leveraging your network effectively is an art in itself. It's not about constantly asking for favors, but about creating value for others and building mutually beneficial relationships. Be proactive in offering help or resources to others in your network. This could be as simple as sharing a relevant article, making an introduction, or offering your expertise on a particular topic. When you do need to ask for help or an opportunity, be specific and respectful of others' time. Clearly articulate what you're looking for and why you think they might be able to help. 
always offer something in return, even if it's just your gratitude and a commitment to pay it forward in the future. Maintaining long-term relationships is crucial for effective networking. It's not enough to make a connection. You need to nurture it over time. Regular check-ins, even if brief, can help keep relationships warm. Share updates about your own progress and achievements, and take genuine interest in others' successes and challenges. Remember that networking isn't just about formal events or professional settings. Some of the most valuable connections can come from unexpected places, a conversation with a seatmate on a flight, a chance encounter at a coffee shop, or a shared interest in a hobby or volunteer activity. Be open to making connections in all areas of your life. Effective networking practices involve a mix of in-person and online activities. Networking events and conferences can provide valuable opportunities to meet new people and reconnect with existing contacts. When attending these events, set specific goals for yourself, perhaps to have meaningful conversations with three new people or to reconnect with two existing contacts. Online networking platforms like LinkedIn have become increasingly important in professional networking. Maintain an up-to-date and engaging profile and be active in sharing content and engaging with others' posts. Join relevant groups and participate in discussions to expand your network and showcase your expertise. When choosing networking events or platforms, be strategic. Focus on those that align with your goals and where you're likely to meet relevant contacts. Quality is more important than quantity. It's better to have a smaller network of strong, meaningful connections than a large network of superficial ones. Follow-up is crucial in networking. After meeting someone new, send a personalized follow-up message within 24 to 48 hours. Reference specific points from your conversation to jog their memory and demonstrate your attentiveness. If you discussed any potential opportunities or collaborations, Reiterate your interest and suggest concrete next steps. Providing value to your network is key to maintaining strong relationships. This doesn't always have to involve grand gestures. Simple actions like sharing relevant articles, making introductions between contacts who could benefit from knowing each other, or offering congratulations on achievements can go a long way in strengthening relationships. Remember that networking is a two-way street. Be generous with your own time and resources when others in your network reach out for help or advice. This reciprocity is what turns a collection of contacts into a true network of mutually supportive relationships. As your network grows, it can be helpful to categorize your contacts and have a system for staying in touch. This might involve using a customer relationship management CRM tool or simply setting reminders to check in with different segments of your network at regular intervals. Networking across diverse groups can be particularly valuable. Don't limit yourself to people in your immediate industry or with similar backgrounds. Diverse connections can provide fresh perspectives, open up new opportunities, and help you think outside the box. Cultural sensitivity is important in networking, especially if you're operating in a global context. Be aware of cultural differences in communication styles, business etiquette, and relationship building. What's considered appropriate networking behavior in one culture might be seen as pushy or inappropriate in another. As you build your network, be patient. Strong relationships take time to develop. Don't expect immediate results from every networking interaction. Some connections might not bear fruit for months or even years, but could eventually lead to significant opportunities. Networking isn't just about what others can do for you, it's also about how you can contribute to your professional community. Consider ways you can give back, such as mentoring younger professionals, speaking at industry events, or contributing to professional associations. Remember that your reputation is a crucial part of your network. Always act with integrity and follow through on your commitments. Word travels fast in professional circles, and a good reputation can be your most valuable networking asset. As your career progresses, your networking needs and strategies may evolve. Early in your career, you might focus more on building a broad base of connections and seeking mentorship. As you advance, 
you might shift towards more selective networking and taking on mentorship roles yourself. Finally, don't neglect the importance of maintaining relationships with your existing network, including former colleagues, classmates, and mentors. These long-standing relationships often prove to be the most valuable over time. As we conclude this exploration of strategic networking, take a moment to reflect on your own networking practices. Are you actively building and nurturing valuable relationships? Are you providing value to your network as well as benefiting from it? Remember, effective networking is a skill that can be developed and refined over time. With strong networking skills, you're well positioned to create opportunities, gather valuable insights, and build a support system that can propel you towards your goals. But success often requires more than just connections. It requires the ability to negotiate effectively to turn opportunities into tangible outcomes. In the next chapter, we'll delve into the art of negotiation mastery. You'll learn strategies for preparing for negotiations, techniques for persuasion and influence, and how to handle objections and reach mutually beneficial agreements. Prepare to enhance your negotiation skills and unlock new levels of success in your personal and professional endeavors. Chapter 13, Negotiation Mastery. The boardroom falls silent as the two parties face each other across the polished table. Months of preparation have led to this moment. With a calm demeanor that belies the stakes involved, the lead negotiator opens the discussion. Hours later, both sides leave with a deal that exceeds their initial expectations. This is the power of negotiation mastery, the ability to create value and achieve outcomes that benefit all parties involved. Negotiation is a fundamental skill in both personal and professional life. Whether you're discussing a salary increase, closing a business deal, or simply deciding where to go for dinner with friends, the principles of effective negotiation apply. Mastering this skill can dramatically increase your ability to achieve your goals and create win-win situations. The foundation of successful negotiation lies in thorough preparation. Before entering any negotiation, take time to clearly define your objectives. What's your ideal outcome? What's your bottom line? The point below which you're willing to walk away. Understanding your own position is crucial, but equally important is trying to understand the other party's perspective. What are their likely goals and constraints? What might they value that you could offer? Research is a critical part of preparation. Gather as much relevant information as possible about the subject of negotiation, market conditions, and the other party. Knowledge is power in negotiations, and being well-informed can give you a significant advantage. Consider potential scenarios and prepare strategies for each. What if they open with a lowball offer? What if they bring up unexpected issues? Having thought through various possibilities in advance can help you respond confidently and effectively in the moment. When the negotiation begins, start by building rapport. Even in business settings, negotiations are fundamentally human interactions. Finding common ground and establishing a positive relationship can set a constructive tone for the entire negotiation. Active listening is a crucial skill in negotiation. Pay close attention not just to what the other party is saying, but how they're saying it. Look for nonverbal cues that might reveal underlying concerns or priorities. Ask clarifying questions to ensure you fully understand their position. One key principle of effective negotiation is to focus on interests, not positions. Positions are the stated demands or offers, while interests are the underlying needs or motivations. By understanding and addressing the interests behind positions, you can often find creative solutions that satisfy both parties. The concept of BATNA, best alternative to a negotiated agreement, is crucial in negotiations. Knowing your BATNA gives you confidence and helps you determine when to accept a deal and when to walk away. Similarly, try to ascertain the other party's BATNA. This knowledge can inform your strategy and help you gauge the strength of your position. Effective use of anchoring can significantly impact negotiations. The first number put on the table often serves as an anchor, influencing the rest of the negotiation. If you have a strong justification, consider making the first offer to set a favorable anchor. 
Be prepared to make concessions, but do so strategically. When you give something up, make sure the other party recognizes it as a concession. Try to get something in return, even if it's a small item. This reciprocity can build goodwill and momentum towards an agreement. Emotions play a significant role in negotiations. While it's important to remain professional, don't be afraid to show genuine emotion when appropriate. Enthusiasm for potential mutual benefits or concern about specific issues can be powerful in influencing the other party. If negotiations reach an impasse, consider changing the structure of the deal. Can you add or remove elements to create value? Sometimes, expanding the pie rather than just dividing it can lead to breakthroughs. Remember, the goal of negotiation isn't to win at the other party's expense, but to reach an agreement that benefits both sides. A reputation for fair dealing can be far more valuable in the long run than any single negotiation victory. As you conclude negotiations, ensure all parties have a clear understanding of the agreement. Summarize key points and follow up with a written agreement to avoid misunderstandings later. By mastering the art of negotiation, you equip yourself with a powerful tool for achieving your goals and creating value in all areas of life. Chapter 14, Work-Life Balance. The executive closes her laptop, smiling as she leaves the office at a reasonable hour. At home, she's fully present with her family, the day's work concerns set aside. Later, she spends time on her passion project before getting a full night's sleep. This scenario illustrates the often elusive but crucial concept of work-life balance, the ability to meet the demands of both professional and personal life without sacrificing either. In our always connected world, maintaining a healthy work-life balance has become both more challenging and more essential than ever. It's not just about dividing time equally between work and personal life, but about finding a harmony that allows you to be productive, fulfilled, and healthy in all areas of your life. The importance of work-life balance cannot be overstated. It affects not just your personal happiness and relationships, but also your physical health, mental well-being, and even your professional performance. Chronic imbalance can lead to burnout, decreased productivity, health issues, and strained personal relationships. Achieving work-life balance starts with clearly defining your priorities, what truly matters to you in both your professional and personal life. Understanding your core values and long-term goals can help you make decisions about how to allocate your time and energy. Time management is crucial for work-life balance. Use techniques like time blocking to ensure you're dedicating sufficient time to both work and personal activities. Set clear boundaries between work and personal time, especially if you work from home. When it's family time or personal time, be fully present. Avoid checking work emails or taking work calls unless absolutely necessary. Learn to say no. This can be challenging, especially for high achievers, but it's essential for maintaining balance. Evaluate new commitments carefully. Will they align with your priorities and values? Do you truly have the time and energy for them without sacrificing other important areas of your life? Efficiency at work can significantly improve your work-life balance. Look for ways to streamline your work processes, delegate tasks when possible, and focus on high-impact activities. The goal is to be more productive during work hours so you can truly disconnect during personal time. Self-care is a critical component of work-life balance. This includes basics like getting enough sleep, eating a healthy diet, and exercising regularly. But it also means taking time for activities that recharge you mentally and emotionally, whether that's reading, pursuing a hobby, or spending time in nature. Mindfulness practices can be powerful tools for achieving work-life balance. Techniques like meditation or deep breathing can help you stay present and focused, reducing stress, and improving your ability to transition between work and personal modes. Remember that perfect balance is a myth. There will be times when work demands more of your attention and times when personal life takes precedence. The key is to strive for balance over time and to be intentional about realigning when things get out of balance. Regular reflection and adjustment are crucial. Set aside time periodically to assess your work-life balance. 
Are you satisfied with how you're allocating your time and energy? Are there areas that need more attention? Be willing to make changes as your circumstances and priorities evolve. By mastering work-life balance, you set yourself up for long-term success and fulfillment in all areas of life. Chapter 15. Sustaining Success and Achieving Long-Term Victory The philanthropist looks out over the city, reflecting on a lifetime of achievements. From humble beginnings, she built a business empire, nurtured a loving family, and now dedicates her time to improving her community. Her success wasn't just a fleeting moment of triumph, but a sustained journey of growth, impact, and fulfillment. This is the essence of long-term victory, not just achieving success, but sustaining and building upon it over time. Sustaining success is often more challenging than initially achieving it. It requires constant vigilance, adaptability, and a commitment to ongoing growth and improvement. The strategies and mindset that brought initial success may not be sufficient for long-term victory. One of the biggest challenges in sustaining success is avoiding complacency. It's easy to become comfortable with a certain level of achievement and stop pushing yourself. Combat this by continually setting new goals and challenges for yourself. Always be looking for the next mountain to climb, the next problem to solve, the next way to grow and improve. Staying inspired and motivated over the long term requires connecting with your deeper purpose. Why do you do what you do? What impact do you want to have on the world? Regularly reconnecting with your core values and long-term vision can provide the fuel to keep pushing forward even when faced with setbacks or periods of low motivation. Continuous learning is crucial for sustained success. The world is constantly changing and what worked yesterday may not work tomorrow. Stay curious, remain open to new ideas, and never stop learning. This might involve formal education, reading widely, seeking out new experiences, or learning from mentors and peers. Adaptability is another key to long-term success. Be willing to evolve your strategies and approaches as circumstances change. This doesn't mean abandoning your core values or vision, but rather being flexible in how you pursue them. The most successful individuals and organizations are those that can pivot quickly in response to new challenges and opportunities. Building and maintaining strong relationships is essential for sustained success. Your network of colleagues, mentors, friends, and family can provide support, opportunities, and valuable perspectives. Nurture these relationships over time and be generous in supporting others' success as well. Remember that success is not just about personal achievement, but also about the impact you have on others and the world around you. Consider how you can use your success to create value for others, whether through mentorship, philanthropy, or creating opportunities for those around you. Resilience is crucial for long-term success. There will inevitably be setbacks and failures along the way. The ability to bounce back, learn from these experiences, and keep moving forward is what separates those who achieve lasting success from those who falter. Self-care becomes even more important as you sustain success over time. It's easy to burn out if you're constantly pushing yourself without taking time to recharge. Prioritize your physical and mental health, maintain interests outside of work, and ensure you're living a well-rounded life. Finally, consider the legacy you want to leave. How do you want to be remembered? What mark do you want to make on the world? Thinking about your long-term legacy can provide powerful motivation and guide your decisions and actions in the present. Conclusion, the ultimate secret to winning at everything you do. As we reach the end of this journey, you might be expecting a simple, magical formula for success, a secret shortcut to winning at everything you do. The truth is both simpler and more profound. The ultimate secret to winning at everything you do is this, there is no secret. Success, in its truest and most fulfilling form, is not about a single strategy, technique, or life hack. It's about the consistent application of the principles we've explored throughout this book. It's about continuous growth, relentless learning, and unwavering commitment to your values and vision. The real victory lies not in any single achievement, but in the person you become through the pursuit of your goals. 
It's about developing the resilience to bounce back from setbacks, the wisdom to learn from every experience, the empathy to build strong relationships, and the adaptability to thrive in an ever-changing world. Winning at everything you do doesn't mean achieving perfection or never facing failure. It means approaching every situation, whether a resounding success or a painful setback, as an opportunity for growth and learning. It means maintaining your integrity and values even as you push for achievement. It means recognizing that true success is not just about personal gain, but about the positive impact you have on others and the world around you. As you move forward from here, armed with the strategies and insights from this book, remember that you are capable of extraordinary things. But more than that, remember that the journey itself, the daily commitment to growth, the small victories, the lessons learned from challenges, is where the real winning happens. Your path to success is uniquely yours. Embrace it fully with all its ups and downs. Stay curious, stay hungry for growth, and never stop believing in your ability to create the life and impact you desire. You have within you everything you need to win at everything you do. Now go forth and make it happen. The world is waiting for your unique contribution. Your greatest victories lie ahead.